With a huge profile around the world, his tours play to massive stadiums, which can be a problem for people in the cheap seats. Is that even him? I mean, it might not even be him. We could have just got any camp Chinese man to run around. After fronting his own chat show for the BBC, Michael's got Australia in his sights and he's been practising his accent. Uh -huh. someone's got your phone, mate. Heading our way for his very own stand-up tour, he is hoping he comes prepared. One keys phone. I'm late. One shoe. I've got to go to a meeting. Please welcome Michael McIntyre. Oh, it's good to see you so excited. Hello, The Project. We're, we're very <laughs> excited How are you? to have you on The Project. We're well, um, and we're excited to announce that you're coming to Australia with your show Happy and Glorious. Is that also what you yes. put on your Tinder profile? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I'm a happily married man, so uh, officially I don't have a Tinder profile. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, uh, we just saw in our, our package you doing an Australian accent previously. When you come to our shores, will this pretty much be the whole show? Yes, you know, it, it overcomes me. I don't know if I'm good at it or, or not, but I, I feel like I need to um, become one of you to really understand you. Well, you're massive. I mean, you've sold 27 shows across the last few years at the O2 Arena in London. That's more than one direction. I mean, do you party as hard as them? Where would you sit on that scale? Um, right. I'm not on that scale at all. No. <laughs> um, I, I'm not on that. I don't party at all. <laughs> I don't exist on that scale, if you want to know my actual place on the scale. Michael, I'm a comic myself. I've never played a gig as big as O2 Arena, I must admit. But uh, when you're playing such a big venue, do you can you still spot the one person in the crowd that doesn't laugh? Yes. It, I always see the one person who's laughing, but then there was one night where I saw about 12,000 people who weren't laughing. <laughs> the less we say about that night, the better. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, when you were little, your parents sold your house to the Osbournes, I understand. Did you, did you ever wonder what became <laughs> yeah. of that home? Well, I know exactly what became of that home because it, I still live on the same road. That's how oh, far right. I've come. I've come 29 houses up the road. I drive past it every day. I, I grew up at number five and now I'm... I shouldn't exactly say where I live, but I'm up the road. But then I said plus 29. <laughs> Anyone who can do simple mathematics of five plus 29 knows exactly where I live now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you I live at 34. <laughs> you turned 40 uh, recently. Uh, how, how are you coping with that? I, w I was sort of OK with it, cos my wife uh, was also 14. You reckon you're in trouble giving out your street address now? You're giving out your wife's age, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's absolutely true. <laughs> now, your show on the BBC has this incredible segment where you hijack the phones of the celebs that come on and then you send a message to all of their contacts. I think we've got one here that you yeah. sent with Ronan Keating saying, feeling a little insecure, do you still think I'm hot? I mean, Harry Styles and Bieber, can I I still compete with these guys, <laughs> which was brilliant, but then not everyone was fooled. Yeah. I think we've got a little clip here. Let's have a look. Russell C. Who's Russell C? That's Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Crowe. Gladiator. <laughs> Nothing gets past Crowe. Right. Ha ha. Someone's got your phone, mate. <laughs> <laughs> is slightly terrifying. We're very glad that we are here and you are over there. But, I mean, do you ever get any, once the cameras yeah. stop rolling, any backlash over it? Oh, yes. Oh, no, there was backlash over that one, but I can't tell you the details because uh, Ronan um, wouldn't like it. But I ran oh. into Ronan uh, subsequently to that and he said that a very, very famous person didn't find that funny at all. <laughs> and uh, they're no longer speaking. So I feel oh. absolutely <laughs> terrible about it. Um, I did send to all myself on, on a previous show that I did. And the text was that uh, we're going to go to a lap dancing club that night. This guy who... who <laughs> He does the vermin at my house. There's not a lot of vermin at my house. And he was on his way. He started driving. He showed up at my house later that night saying, where are we going? I, I suppose we're going lap dance. And I got the message. I'm like, no, it's, all, it's all a big joke on the TV. So would you please thank Michael McIntyre? I'm coming. October. I'll see you there. Oh!